not a dystopia warning, just um, me thinking out loud really, because I'm not going to be able to get all of this in my roast video about William Rag. You know, William Rag, the Tory MP who got his lad out on Grinder, then got himself all blackmailed and decided to hand out the numbers of his colleagues to try and save his own skin because he's a coward and uh, a national security risk and a moron. There's been a mixed reception about this entire saga. There's been a lot of, uh, well, naturally, there's been a lot of uh, roasting of him for being that thick. There's also been some people, some news outlets that are showing him sympathy, especially as I think it's one of the political editors for The Guardian was suggesting that we should show him some sympathy over this. And I say that's absolute bullshit, frankly. He's in a position of power and status and recognisable. He's a public official. He should know that he is primed for being blackmailed or honey trapped. OK, that should come with the territory. He's not just a normal member of the public. His salary proves that. His power to make our laws proves that. Now, the thing that's disturbed me the most about it is the media reaction and inaction and the fact that this has barely, barely made the news. Very little press coverage on the BBC flagship Sunday morning, Laura Kunzberg show. Completely failing to acknowledge this, but yet making a song and dance about Rayner possibly forgetting or overlooking a grand in tax, right? And then you've got the male gunning, gunning for, for Angela Rayner. That's not surprising, is it, considering the absolute shocking sexism that they've levelled at her over the years, even referencing her private parts. Yeah, a bunch of um, upper class souls coming for a working class woman. Hardly shocking, is it? I'm not saying she's beyond scrutiny, but you've got to look at the proportionality of this when you've got people like Nazim Zahawi, you know, avoiding a lot of money in tax. Lord Ashcroft with his non-dom status, over a hundred million avoided in tax. Rees Mogg, moan. Further examples of, of avoidance, right, that needs to be looked at. Do the male mention that? Do they fuck? And we all know why, because they're a PR arm of the Conservative Party. Now, I'm not going to stop banging on about this because... It was only when I really started to immerse myself in politics, and I have for like the last four years, that I really closely scrutinised the media. And it all starts to sound a bit like a conspiracy, but it's not. I mean, you've just got to look at the royals and how they handled the whole Kate situation, which was eerie. But again, the royals have immense status and power and privilege. They have PR wings. They brief against members of their own family. They're not called the firm for nothing. They all played ball and went silent, complete blackout when Kate went off grid. When people started speculating because it was weird, they came back after she eventually made a statement and called all the people speculating vile trolls, which is quite ironic coming from the tabloid media, isn't it? When they're the kind of people then to a few years back used to lay in the fucking gutter and take pictures up women's skirts and put it on the front page. People that essentially contributed to the death of Prince Harry and William's mother, Diana. Our media is the biggest barrier to us having a functioning democracy. I'm not going to stop telling people that because that's the absolute truth. They can't be trusted to provide impartial, credible, unbiased information. And we as a public can't make decisions about things that matter to us, like should we have a royal family, who to vote for, without an unbiased, credible information source. But we're fed an agenda and a narrative riddled with bias that's only there to serve the richest, most powerful people in our country both the billionaire owners of the newspapers that don't even live in Britain or pay tax here, who are basically just serving the interests of the people, the Conservatives, who will give them the handy little tax breaks that they want, who will allow them to exploit the tax loopholes. And the influence that, that, that these newspapers, these broadcasters have on the general public is immense because people think that you, sh you can trust it. If, it, if it's in print, if it's on the telly, they think you can trust it. People don't know that there's, like, Tories heading up the BBC. Not enough people know that Richard Sharp 
sorted out a loan for the Prime Minister that gave him the BBC chair job. One small grace is that print media is slowly dying out and that people were starting to look to, to other places for their news. I mean, there is one concern with that, and that's that not everyone takes the approach of uh, making sure that they fact check everything they say and not everyone with a big following necessarily tells the truth, you know? I've always made it clear that what I put out is a mixture of uh, piss taking, <laughs> um, informing, and I've made my bias clear. Like the people that are in control of our country are fucking monsters. And that's a really important thing to tell people. But it's also really important to tell people who is, who is giving them an assist here. William Ragg is one of a long line of, uh, in his case, cowardly idiots, right? In the rest of the Tory party, there's all manner of actual criminals, yeah? Many of the things that they do we can't even talk about, that we hear about, because they've got super injunctions. They'll put a slap on us, you know, they'll get us sued. Some of it is so shocking, like, that it, it keeps me awake. These are the people that are making our laws, you know. The people that were in control of our country, that were in control of our pandemic response, were getting on the bags throughout lockdown inside Number 10, and the police did nothing, and the police continue to do nothing, and the police will not hold any of these people accountable. No. A number of Tory MPs blocked a vote on a bill that would stop people convicted of SA and worse from standing as an MP. And if you think about it, these MPs have access to schools, they have access to hospitals. It's just, it's, it's a prime opportunity. Absolute power, zero accountability, access to vulnerable people, the ability to make loads of bank off the backs of what? Legislating in their own interest, yeah? Now I'm accused of being a bloody centrist because I'm abusing and trying to find loopholes in the current systems that those bastards have put in place and made pretty watertight just to get us a little bit closer to where we need to be. But given a choice, I'd be a fucking anarchist. I'd burn it all down if I could, yeah. That's how angry I am after four years of looking at this and seeing how it all operates. Yeah, I'm, I'm furious most days because every single institution in this country is riddled with this rot. It's riddled with legislation that only really favours the upper classes and those with high status who get away with literal murder. Yeah, yeah, every single institution in Britain is rotten. It needs to be torn down. And I'm a fan of fire, but I'm not allowed to. Because I'd get locked up. Whereas, uh, you know, some of these Arista twats can commit brazen crimes in broad daylight and never have any concern that they will see a cell. Anyway, wish me luck. Um, I'm about to... Uh, I'm about to rip the shit out of rag. I just felt like I needed to get that off my chest. I've said it before, I'll say it again, don't believe the bullshit. Get your information from independent investigative journalism. People that tell the truth without fear or favour. Those on the Tory payroll, much like the Tories themselves, don't give a fuck about you. Or the truth, obviously.